welcome to another video so let's see how we can take a 2d concept and have that defined as a 3d mesh for a 3d print so this will be the case study ornament with a wooden frame and we have over here a wolf and there will be two cups over here as well on the frame and they will burst to that frame onto a chest table so for the generative ai we're going to take a look at hidden 3d and also at rodin so let's go ahead with those Keep in mind that this original image created over here is quite low in terms of resolution. So we see the overall resolution, only 1024 on the X and on the Y. So we're going to see that it's really important to have that upscaled. Now let's jump over here within Hitam. So this will be the upscale model. As you can see over here, the details onto the woof will be like this. This is the original one, which hasn't been upscaled and the model will look like this we see over here uh, if i'm going to check the preview image this will be the one pixelated maybe some of the chest parts since they were made using generative ai not that well defined so we have over here this one can be the king but uh, over here for the queen it's not that it's a little bit blurred over there but we see that this is the output for the one made using the pixelated one so we see over here that the frame over here on the back has been filled and that is quite impressive. And we texture the model will look like this. And the one using the upscaled image, which is this one, you can also see that the image will load a lot slower and this is the one upscaled. We see over here the fine details onto the woof leg over there and they will be present over here as well. If I'm going to enable a texture, the model will look like this. And what is really interesting is the fact that the chest pieces within this model will look a lot better. Within Hitam 3D, you can upload an image and after that you're going to generate it. You can't go ahead and tweak any additional parameters, but you have the possibility to do up to three free retries without having to spend additional credits. So in this case, if I'm just going to take a look at the model from this, perspective the model looks really good well as well uh, the mesh over here but as this will slowly rotate to the back we're going to set the back it will have the following problems this can easily be fixed afterwards within blender or within cad so it's not that a major deal in this case but keep in mind that over here for this which was the initial image that hasn't been upscaled the back was like this so it, this is quite flat as you can see without any details onto the back now the same image i'm also added over here within rodin and we see that rodin will crop the image so in this case it cropped half of the frame but everything that remained will be quite detailed one element is regarding the high amount of pieces over here as you can see for the chest so over here there should be three pieces but uh, Rodin decided to add multiple as you can see and since that has been cropped in the background we're only going to have half of that frame but overall the wolf will look pretty good over here keep in mind that the major advantage within Rodin is that you can input the image and uh, yeah let's let's do one now so I can select this, I can go, for example, within downloads, I can select the image. I'm going to hit generate and it will also process really fast. So while I'm going to discuss the other, I'm going to wait for this to, to load. This is the one where I went and uh, I remove all the background, but I didn't remove the frame. But Rodin over here decided to remove that wooden frame. I only cropped. Um, let's say the background from the original image and this is the output as we can see it over here not sure exactly if you can further go ahead and tweak if you want the background to be cropped or not we have various settings over here so as you can see i didn't find any regarding that but i'm pretty sure that they are and we see that this will process really fast over here with it on 3d for a model of this complexity Currently, it will take um, quite a long period, 
but we see over here how many fine details we have within the model. And also regarding the overall placement of the chess pieces, we have them like this within the reference. Some of them were a little bit moved and blurred, and maybe that also um, was problematic for the generative AI tool. But we can go ahead and we can further work with those directly within Blender. So over here, the overall proportion of the frame, as we can see, it, it will be like this. So it's not actually rectangular. This one will have the following profile. So it has a cutout over there. And Rodin should now have this new image process. And as we can see, it will crop half of that. But overall, I really like the fact that within Rodin, some of the chess pieces are a little bit uh, better defined and smoother, while some over here within Newton 3D will look like this. Now, you can go ahead and we can further improve this, but that will require um, Blender. So let's say I will want to download this. I'm going to save this on desktop. I'm going to call this Wolves 1. And within Blender, I will have that load. So I'm going to go to File, Import. This is a GLB file. On desktop, we will have the GLB file. Now, I will enable the texture. And if I will zoom in, we're going to see that the woof ornament will look like this. I'm just going to slightly rotate it over here 90 degrees. I'm going to create over here the default cube just as a reference to see how large this part will be. So regarding that, uh, those should be chess pieces. The size is pretty decent. So we can go ahead and we can edit and trim some of the, those parts. And we can add additional chess pieces. So within Blender Kit, if I'm going to search for chess, if you are not using Blender Kit for Blender, I highly encourage you to do that. For example, we see this model over here. We see the author. And we can simply drag and drop it within our scene. And we can then go ahead and pick some of those parts. I'm just going to add two chess pieces. We see that the models will load. Also, the texture will be downloaded in real time. And once you have it, it will also be stored over here. So we can duplicate this and uh, we can go ahead and we can scale them. We can mesh them over here and we can go ahead and replace some of those elements. But we will need to go within edit mode over here and we will have to trim those meshes. And since everything is still connected, it will take a little bit of work, but we can easily recreate something like this um, with fine details. It does require manual work, but Generative AI will do the heavy lifting in this case with the overall concept because it will take a lot of time and most importantly skill in order to be able to sculpt something uh, something like this. For the frame and for the chess pieces, those are easy, but uh, the overall woof over here will be something a little bit trickier and only 3D artists are able to do that well. Okay, so let's go ahead and check over here with Rodin. So this was the second output. As you can see, they will have a feature entitled Bank to Parts. And this is not yet available, but once this will be available, it will split individual components. So the woof ornament, the frame, the chess pieces, the chess table, they will all be individual parts. And then it will be a lot more easier to split uh, those components. Okay, so if you want to learn more additional um, stuff regarding Blender or Generative AI, I encourage you to check uh, my playlist. Also, this was regarding the upscale. So the original image that I show you over here, which was 1000 by 1000, this was upscaled using the following web tool over here. So you can just upload an image. You are not required to sign in. And uh, you can check the before and after. As you can see, it will greatly enhance that image. And Generative AI will be able to better replicate those. OK, so regarding Blender, I have over here a playlist regarding Blender tips and tricks. You can find that also within the video description. 
I also have various tips and tricks for other tools. For example, for Katia, I have around 400 videos, but also for Solidors and Fusion. Okay, so I hope you enjoy this kind of content. I'm also going to position a similar video over here on the left and a subscribe button to the right. So that's it. Thanks for watching.